don't bar hop. <laughs> That's a rookie mistake, man. You always end up in a bar you ain't ready for mentally. <laughs> you know I mean, I had some guys take me bar hopping in Chicago. They thought it'd be funny to take me to a bar for little people. <laughs> you gotta tell your fat friend if you're taking him to a midget bar. That should be a rule. <laughs> Because I wasn't ready for it, and I already had a couple in me. I walked in there like, there's nobody in here. <laughs> and I looked down, and I went, oh, my God, I'm huge. <laughs> I am your leader. <laughs> and the night got worse, man. I got in a fight with one of the midgets. Tell me where the pot of gold is. <laughs> oh, laugh it up, man. That's all we got left is laughter, right? That's all we got, man. Everything else will scare you to death right now, won't it? Can't even turn the news on. That'll horrify you, right? Murder, death, rape, child abduction, shitty economy, oil spill, 95 degrees. Good luck. <laughs> Didn't anybody get a cat out of a tree or something I could hold on to? I need some hope. Hope is a dying commodity, so I try to hold on to stories that inspire me. And my favorite story of the year last year, hands down, was that pilot that landed that plane on the Hudson River. Sully. Sully. Right? And you know his name had to be Sully. If that was a Chad or a Winston, he would have cartwheeled that plane right to the middle of Manhattan. Man. Just up there peeing on himself. My dad's not here. I don't know what to do. Sully's like, let me finish my coffee. We'll land this bitch in the river. What do you think? I'm gonna walk up and down the aisles looking for babies and hot chicks to give CPR to. I'm Sully. And where might I find Captain Jack Sparrow? That's a man right there, man. Let me tell you something. If I ever did anything that heroic in my life, I would use that argument against my wife for the rest of my life. You didn't clean up in here. I landed a plane on the Hudson River. shit tonight. Of course, so you know she's like every other wife. She's heard it so many times. She's like, tell us again how you saved everybody. Birds in the engine and we can land on the river, but we can't cut the goddamn grass when I want you to. That's the joy of marriage right there, man. Another good story a couple weeks ago, British Columbia, a little boy's in his backyard playing with his dog. A cougar jumps over the fence. A cougar, not meow. <laughs> the little boy's dog attacks the cougar, right? The little boy runs in the house to safety, and while he's watching from the window, his dog and the cougar are fighting. The cougar's tearing it up. The cops show up. They kill the cougar. The little boy's dog has three operations and lives. It's a good story, right? It's a good story, but I started thinking about it. You think that dog came home with a little bit of an attitude? <laughs> oh, you bet your ass I'm sleeping in your bed tonight, Timmy. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to wiggle my tail and beg for food, but as you can see, I don't have a tail anymore, Timmy! <laughs> imagine him trying to get that dog to go play? Here, boy, fetch, fetch, fetch! You can go fuck yourself, fetch! A cougar for you. <laughs> Turn on the heat. I'm gonna go pee on your bed, you little ungrateful. <laughs> we got three legs left. <laughs> now the scary part is, man, those were actual stories that happened. That's the world we live in. Dude, the game is now, can you keep your sanity? Because people are snapping. You know that little voice in your head that you're not supposed to listen to? <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody cuts you off, you go, God, I'd love to wreck into him right now. <laughs> People are starting to listen to that voice. <laughs> There's a guy in Texas flew his plane into a building, the IRS building. I heard building and plane, I went, oh shit. And then I heard IRS, I was like, well, let's hear him out. Was... <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know how that phone call went. What's that? You're taking my house. I'll bring the keys right over. <laughs> You guys are on the fourth floor, right? Fourth floor? <laughs> I'm 
getting old, man. Heard the gun for halftime go off when I turned 40. I'm at halftime in my life. My life is half over. And I played a sloppy first half, man. <laughs> I didn't think the game was gonna go this long. I didn't. <laughs> it took some time outs coming down the field. You know you're getting old when you hurt yourself sleeping. <laughs> hey, you ever wake up? What the fuck was I dreaming about? <laughs> oh, God. And then you gotta lie to your buddies. I ripped my neck up moving a fridge. <laughs> really? Nah, I sprained it on a pillow. It's all going to hell. I don't know what happened. <laughs> the, older, the older you get, the more stuff you gotta quit, you know? Like, I quit smoking weed. <laughs> I had to. I got a seven-year-old. You know how stupid you look when you can't figure out chutes and ladders? <laughs> And you throw a fit about it. If I get here, I gotta go to the bottom? I ain't playing! <laughs> That's not good parenting. <laughs> if you're over 35, too, technology doesn't have you by the throat. Doesn't own you, and I like that. People my age look at technology like, yeah, I can't figure that out. <laughs> Just turn the radio on or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't believe in all those buttons, man. And let me tell you something. If you're under 25 and you use your cell phone a lot, I want you to do me a favor. For two hours a day, I want you to put your phone in your drawer. That way you remember how to hold a conversation. <laughs> I cannot talk to someone under 25 without a two minutes into the conversation, they pull that phone out and start hitting them buttons. Ah, yeah, oh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. It's like watching a chimp peel a peanut at the zoo. They're just, woo, 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 ah, 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 ah. What are you doing? They act like their phones, their personality, right? That's all they want to talk about, is that phone. I always tell young guys, work on your car. Nobody ever got laid in the back of an iPhone. <laughs> they love that phone, man. They want to tell you all about it. Look, check out my phone, bro. Check it out. Check it out. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Look at that. Look at all the applications. This one tells me the weather in five different places I'm never going to be. Look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> you ever notice they never make any grown-up applications? It's just all to trick kids into blinking lights. Look, it's blinking, it swirls, that's magic. <laughs> Gonna make something for my age group. Make me a wife app. <laughs> that way I can scream into that phone, I'll be home when I said I'll be home. <laughs> and then you hit the button and she hears, honey, I'm a little delayed. I want you to know I was thinking about you. <laughs> I love you and I'll be home soon. Mwah. Like, that shows you how old I am. I just hung up the iPhone, see that? <laughs> Put that right on the rocker. <laughs> Not a fan of all the buttons, man, and I'll tell you why. I have a seven-year-old, and I don't want him to have to download his childhood. You understand? I want him to be a kid. I want him to go outside and play and think of stuff to do. And it's hard as a parent, man. You gotta let him play some video games, right? because you gotta let him keep up with his boys at school. You don't want to be that weird kid at the lunch table shooting marbles going, my dad says this is a video game. <laughs> I'm trying to do that. <laughs> but there's gotta be a happy middle ground. I don't want him to be one of them video vegetables. You know what I mean? Go outside and play, that's it. You know, use your imagination. We didn't have a Nano or a PlayStation or an iPod or a PSP or a... I had a stick. <laughs> and on a good day, a roll of caps and a fucking rock. <laughs> that was it. That was it. Don't structure your kid's lifestyle. If they want to play, let them play, man. Sometimes you got to make them play. And I don't believe in the play date, I'll tell you that. It's a play date. She's on a play date. <laughs> we never had play dates. My dad would look at you and go, get out of the house. 
and then he would lock the door. <laughs> you couldn't get back in even if you wanted to. I'm thirsty! Use the hose! <laughs> Taking a nap. I'll see you in a couple hours. <laughs> and you left for eight hours. Nobody knew where you were. There was no supervision, right? Right? Just wandering around with a book of matches, looking for shit to burn. <laughs> Lock me out of the house. I'll get your attention, old man, if that's what you're looking for. You don't know fear until a woman looks in your eyes and goes, I'm pregnant, 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 pregnant. <laughs> and then you shit yourself just a little. That's great, hon. Oh, God, that's great. Oh, I gotta get a job. <laughs> My wife was pregnant. We tried to do everything right. We didn't do anything right. We got kicked out of the first Lamaze class. You know the breathing class? The <laughs> kicked out of the first one. All right, I got us kicked out of the first one. <laughs> but I'm a comedian. You put me in a classroom. How long did you think it was going to take? <laughs> I go in there, and the first thing they're teaching the women is called the cat crawl. It's to alleviate pressure across the abdomen. So I got four pregnant women in front of me on their hands and knees with their backs arched and their asses up in the air. <laughs> so I said to the guy next to me, this is how this whole thing got started. <laughs> out in the hall, sir, out in the hall. All right. And if you think PMS makes a woman crazy, pregnancy takes that into Jedi level. <laughs> it's not their fault. They can't control it, man. I've seen the werewolf. I know. <laughs> Those chemicals get rolling in that blood. They get weird stuff happening in their brain. They get weird uh, food cravings. They get crazy food cravings. Eight months in, my wife wanted to eat ice. She come in the room. I like to eat a bucket of ice. <laughs> You want to eat it? Yeah, a bucket of ice would be great right now. <laughs> Honey, I don't think that's a good... You get me a bucket of ice right now! <laughs> Here! <laughs> she took the bucket and her tail followed her down the hallway. <laughs> Sat there eating ice. I know, Mom, I the ice. Mm, mommy wanted ice. Mommy will have the ice. I will have the ice. You know, the baby was in there going, B -b 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 what the fuck is she doing up there? <laughs> huh? Send down some soup. <laughs> now he's here and he's, he's hers most of the time, man. If you ask him, who would you rather spend a day with? He'll go, Dada. He said, who would you rather be trapped on an island with? He said, Mama, no question. <laughs> That's where his bread's buttered. But he'll hang with me a little bit now. I like that. You know, he's coming around. Seven's a fun age, man. You know, he's starting to lose his teeth. He looks like a little homeless person. <laughs> <laughs> I showed him how to jam a straw up in that missing tooth, get that spitball accuracy going, you know. <laughs> Seven's a fun age, man. People ask you stupid questions, though, before they get there, too, you know. Like, uh, they would ask me when she was pregnant, they'd go, what are you having? They'd go, a little boy. They'd go, what if he's gay? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Yell do over? What do, you, what do you want me to do? That's my son, either way. That just means I'm going to ballet instead of football. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I'm not changing. I'm going to root at the ballet like I'm at the football game. You call that a pirouette? Get your fucking head in the game! It's all in the adjustments. <laughs> I think he's heterosexual, though. I'm pretty sure. The other day I came home, he was on the couch with his hand in his underwear watching Hannah Montana. <laughs> I said, welcome to the club, son. Welcome to the club. It's a nice spot you got picked out on the couch here, buddy. I like that. Like I said, man, seven is a fun age. Seven is a fun age. Because they want to be you, you know? But in my case, I got to be careful because he's right at that age where he's starting to repeat everything I say. 
he doesn't do it right away. He waits like a week. He's like a little time release smart ass. <laughs> I never know when it's coming, right? The other day, we're driving to a family dinner. I'm here, the wife's here, he's in the back. As we pull into this restaurant, this guy cuts me off. I go, now what's this guy doing? And from the back seat, I hear, is that guy an asshole, Dad? <laughs> and you know I'm no help. I look back, good eye, boy, good eye. <laughs> Gonna put that in context. I love when he swears. <laughs> no, I do, I mean, I love it. It makes me pee on myself. I, I... <laughs> My wife, it makes her skin crawl. I can't get enough of it. I make him do it. I do, I make him leave messages on my brother's cell phone. <laughs> Hi, Uncle Brian, it's Will. My dad says you can go fuck yourself. I love you, bye. Sometimes wrong is worth the funny. <laughs> the bad part is sometimes my wife will catch us doing that. And then she will snap. What is wrong with you? You're insane. What's he gonna do with that? Where's he gonna take that? Is he gonna grow up and get a job swearing? <laughs> If I was a mechanic, we'd be building an engine right now. What do you want me to do? I'm trying to help out. My favorite time he ever swore was at the aquarium in Chicago. This one was awesome. We go down to the aquarium, and he wants to take a picture of the dolphins jumping, right? So I go get the disposable camera. We go down to the tank, right? 25 moms, 25 kids. 25 moms, 25 kids. Me and the boys standing there like Bart and Homer, right? <laughs> So he's looking through his camera. Finally, the dolphins jump, and they go back in the water, and I hear, click, ah, oh, fuck me. <laughs> I had 50 women burn a hole in my head. How do you live with yourself? <laughs> you have failed your child, sir. I didn't know what to do. Everybody's staring at us. <laughs> I just picked him up. I'm the uncle. His parents drink. We just had him for the day. This is crazy. <laughs> We're all embarrassed. We're going to church. <laughs> and by the way, ladies, this one's from me to you. It's on the house. It's a freebie. Every man starts a lie with this face. Bless you, ladies. You have to endure how stupid we are. Uh, I, that's why it baffles me. I, after, after 10 years, she still wants to talk to me. What is wrong with her? What is wrong with any of you? Don't, don't talk to us. Nothing smart comes out of here. We got two speeds, stupidity and perversion. That's it. That's all there is. Stop hoping for a good conversation. <laughs> Call your friend. She'll give you an intelligent conversation. That's why when you girls go, what are you thinking? We go, nothing, because you couldn't handle how stupid it is. <laughs> it would blow your brain right out of the front of your skull. <laughs> what are you thinking? I was wondering if I'd get beer to shoot out of my windshield wiper into my mouth while I'm driving. I was thinking about building a conveyor belt from the couch to the fridge. What do you think it would cost? Seriously. <laughs> you have to deal with us dummies, ladies. I'm sorry. But you put us through it a little bit, too, though. Like, when you get married, you think you're going to get laid whenever you want. What a crock of shit that is. <laughs> 
The longer you're married, the harder they make you work for it, man. After 10 years, dinner and a movie don't cut it. After 10 years, you gotta say stuff like, who wants new floors? <laughs> I smell a trip to Macy's, start talking dirty. <laughs> I don't like watching TV with my wife. I hate her programs. <laughs> I just said that because she's not here. <laughs> Ladies, if your man's been with you for a while and he's still watching your programs, he's just trying to get laid. <laughs> And that's how dumb we are. Instead of Romans, hey, I watched your show, if you wanna. <laughs> yeah. Really, that's your A game right there? All right. I hate watching TV. I just don't like the channel. She watches that Lifetime channel. There's a lot of pain on the Lifetime channel, man. I watched a Lifetime movie two weeks ago. I got a yeast infection. <laughs> It's always some woman setting some man on fire. <laughs> and the scary part is your wife watches like, yes, yeah, sister, you go ahead, light him up. He deserved every bit of that. He ignored you, light him on fire. <laughs> that or it's a woman running down a hallway with a busted leg. Ah! 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 After a half hour, I start rooting for the murderer. I do, I, I'm all like that. She went right in the storeroom, go get her. <laughs> That is, she watches those do-it-yourself channels. Uh, whoever invented the do-it-yourself network should be set on fire in a dumpster somewhere. I'm not. <laughs> you know how many paint stores I've been in since that stuff hit the air? My wife's standing there, two colors in her hand. Which color do you like, this one or this one? I like that one. I like this one. <laughs> All right, well, get that one. I want to know what you like. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Yeah, which one do you like? You wanna know which one I like, honey? I like the one that'll get us out of here! That's the one I like! I'll buy all of them right now, let's go! I just wanna get home and sit. Yeah. I do. See, that's what they hate most about us, fellas, is that we can sit still and be happy. It makes your skin crawl. They can feel it in the other room on their neck. They're like, da -da 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 -da. he is happy and relaxing. <laughs> Not on my shift. <laughs> See, they don't have an idol. Women have no idol. <laughs> they have no idol. It's on or off. There's no hovering. Guys can wait a little while to decide what we're gonna do. Maybe not do it. Not really care if we don't do it. <laughs> Woman's motor's running, man. My wife, she has stuff come out of her mouth the minute her eyes open. If I get to the mall by eight o'clock, I can return those sheets that I wanted to take back. I haven't been able to take them back for two weeks and I wanted to do that. I'm gonna drop the boy off at school early and then I'm gonna run over there. I got time to do that. My friend Susie called me. I haven't talked to her in like three months. She said, you wanna go to the mall? I said, I'd love to go to the mall. When we going to the mall? I said, I'm going to Tuesday. I'm gonna drop Will off at school early. It's 6 a.m. She's sitting there hovering like a hummingbird. <laughs> they do get some advantages, kids, today, though, right? They get to do whatever they want. My son is the prince, man. All he has to do is ask. Mommy, can we please go to the... Sure, honey, let's get in a truck and make a memory. <laughs> My dad's answer for everywhere you ever wanted to go was, they're closed. <laughs> I see people in there, they're cleaning. <laughs> Monday's their cleaning day. <laughs> Everywhere my wife takes my, my son to eat, she's got those antibacterial wipes, right? So, oh, why, oh, there's a virus, it's coming from Germany. I read about it, it can kill all of us right now. <laughs> no, it's not. We're fine. You want to know why kids are all sick? Because everything's too purified and filtered. That's the problem. There's no immune system anymore. You could be at a ball game with my dad, drop a sandwich in the dirt, he'd go, what are you doing? Pick it up. 
First two bites are crunchy, you're good the rest of the way. Let's go. That's 450. That's 450. <laughs> That's how they used to disinfect stuff. They blow on it. <laughs> Here, eat that. Eat it. Eat it. We didn't have hand sanitizer. My mom would spit in the tissue. <laughs> come here, come here. Ah, come on! Come on! Ah. <laughs> My wife, God bless her, she's always reading what's best for the boy, you know? She knows not to listen to me, I'm just an idiot. She's always trying to turn me on to like the new things, you know? She's like, don't feed him sugar after 3 p.m. That'll wreck his metabolism. <laughs> well, as you can see, my parents didn't give a fuck about my metabolism. <laughs> my parents thought a metabolism was some weird flu you could get. <laughs> don't get that metabolism, that'll kill you. You don't want to get that. <laughs> don't, get, don't feed him sugar. Are you out of your mind? I grew up in a house, and by the time you were nine, if you got my dad a beer, your reward was a sip. <laughs> huh? yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not in any parenting handbooks today. <laughs> Here, take a sip of that. Don't tell your mother that's my boy. <laughs> and the old man knew what he was doing, because by the fourth beer, I was going for him. I got you, baby. Name on I get him right over there. By the time I was 12, his buddies had come over. I'd come out in the living room like a vendor. Beer here, oh beer, thank you, beer. Everybody in LA gives their kids medicine. That's how they parent. They go, oh, he had ADD. We had to give him some Ritalin. That's him drooling right there with the crayon. <laughs> We didn't have Ritalin. You know what happens when you got ADD when I was a kid? My dad would get an inch from your face and go, pay attention! Oh. <laughs> I'm cool, I'm cool. They got away from me for a minute, but I'm all right now, I'm okay. <laughs> you say married men live longer, I think it just feels that way. We live longer because they're trying to save us, right? My wife is starting to do it to me. Yeah, you gotta lose some weight. <laughs> I'd lose weight, but you know, it don't work out for everybody. <laughs> you rarely get hot and pretty and funny in the same room. <laughs> I have a little damage to you. My wife's getting sneaky about it though. She doesn't bug me about my weight anymore. She's just getting sneaky. She's starting to wrap leftovers in aluminum foil because it's noisy. <laughs> yeah, that's sneaky. I'm out there at 2 a.m. like a safe cracker trying to get a piece of pizza, man. <laughs> you don't hear them coming up, what are you doing? Ah! <laughs> Put a bell on you so I know where you're at. And it's years of that progression to where they get to the point where they can do it to you without you knowing. I watch it happen down at my dad's house. My stepmom messes with him every morning by asking him a question that makes no sense just to get his blood pressure going. <laughs> She'll come in the room and go, you want a sandwich, ham or turkey? He'll go, ham. She'll go, we don't have any ham. <laughs> You actually see his brain lock up. It... <laughs> and then he'll mumble into the garage. Why the fuck would you ask me about a ham sandwich? <laughs> you don't have any ham. It's like living with a lunatic. But see, she knows she has to do this. Because my dad is starting to come unglued a little bit. He's using the wrong words to describe stuff, and he's convinced he's right. You can't argue with him, so she got to keep him running on the right temperature. Yeah, I'm sure he's out of his mind. Uh, well, he wanted to buy her a candle for her birthday. 
So we took him to the candle store. He walks into a store full of people and goes, smells like incest in here. <laughs> Just pick something, man. Let's get out of here. Just, you know. <laughs> I took him to the heart doctor for a checkup. He comes out. I go, how'd it go? He goes, ah, they put them wires on my chest. Gave me a KGB. I'm clear. 